This video is sponsored by Keeps. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I love 3D printing. I've used it for a ton of stuff, but especially to organize different areas in my workshop and especially my drawers. I printed hundreds of different boxes. I made organizers for a bunch of my tools. I've even made special organizers for everything from sandpaper to chisels. But 3D printing isn't the only thing you can use to do projects like this. In fact, in today's video, I'm going to use my new laser cutter to explore some of the benefits that come with laser cutting, being able to work with cheap goods and cut out relatively large pieces in a pretty short amount of time. So we're going to try and use laser cutting to organize some of the areas in my workshop that I haven't quite been able to make any good solutions using 3D printers. And we're going to start with this drawer right here, which is where I store all of my glue wood glue, CA glue, activator for the CA glue, a bunch of tape, and apparently gloves. Now, yes, I know this isn't like super bad, but I want this to look much more like what I've got up here. Everything has its spot and nothing like moves around if you open and close the drawer. So that is gonna be a really fun challenge. I also wanna try to see if I can turn one of these boxes here into something way more organized than what it currently is. So I'm gonna turn this thing into something similar to what I've got in my drawers where everything is neatly laid out, easily accessible and looks good. But we'll worry about that later. Let's start off with my drawers. Right, so there's obviously a lot going on in this drawer. And I think the best way to tackle it is in different sections. So the plan is to make multiple different smaller organizers that organize one thing at a time instead of trying to make one big thing that organizes everything at once. And the thing I'm gonna start with is the thing that annoys me the most about this whole setup, and that is the way I store my super glue. You see, currently I store all my bottles of super glue inside this compartment of this plastic organizer here, which is fine. I know where they are, but there's one big issue and that is with super glue, regardless of the brand, if you store a bottle laying on their side, super glue will get in the tip. And after a bunch of times opening and closing it, the tip or the cap here will eventually glue itself shut. And then you'll be left with bottles like this where you can't even get the cap off. <laughs> You're probably thinking to yourself, well, duh, just store the bottles upright, which yeah, that would be a great solution. I've only got a small problem and that is that well, my drawer isn't tall enough. So instead of building new drawers, I'm just gonna have to solve it in a different way. I want it to be able to hold four bottles of glue. I also want it to hold one of these activator bottles. This is what makes it hard and faster. And since I can't store these upright, I wanna be able to store them at an angle like this so that there's a little air pocket at the top here. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can go about designing a project like this. The first thing I would do is start by taking all the different measurements that are gonna be important. In this case, I want the diameter and the length of all the bottles and this and how much space I've got available in the drawer. And after that, it's up to you. You could design all of these different parts in a 2D program like Illustrator. Personally, I like to model everything in 3D so I can see the way it looks before I go to cut out all the parts. Now, I use SolidWorks to draw up all these different parts just because that's what I'm used to using, but a free program such as Fusion 360 would work great for this task. And then after I've 3 d modeled all the parts, I've exported them to DXF, loaded them into the cutting program that comes with the machine. I'll now load a sheet of six millimeter poplar. This is the material I'll be using for all the different things that we'll be making in this video. Load it in here, close it up, and now we cut out some parts and then see if they fit. All right, are you ready? Here are all the parts. And I'm pretty excited to see if all of this can hold all of this. These two bits are the ones that are gonna hold this thing. Then we've got one, two, three, and four of those. This thing, which obviously is for the glue bottles, and another one up there. Now to lock all these bits in place, we'll have a side piece back and front. <laughs> hey, not bad. So if I did this right, the activator goes on top there. Then we've got one, two, three, four bottles of glue. Now I feel pretty good about this. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of the super glue and glue everything permanently in place. Look at how well everything stays in place and nothing like moves around when I open and close the drawer. It's definitely a great step in the right direction of getting all this organized but it is just that, it's just one step. The next obvious thing that we have to deal with is all this tape. Everything from masking tape to double-sided tape and packing tape. Also, some of the rolls of tapes, just like the glue, is too big 
so I'll have to store them in a different way than standing straight up like this. Let's start by pulling all of this out and we can figure out how to organize it all. All right, so I've got all these different rolls of tape here. And I'm gonna start by sorting out all of the duplicates and figuring out what I actually need to have easily accessible in the drawers. And then all the other rolls will go in this box. This is basically where I store all the spare tape and the stuff that just isn't used that often. Right, after going through, ditching all the stuff that I don't want, taking out all the duplicates, I've arrived at this. I've got all the different thicknesses of masking tape, a bunch of random tape, the two rolls that are too big to be standing upright, some electrician's tape, and I also want a dedicated spot for this type of masking tape. This is like the fancy Tessa tape, which doesn't leave any marks and you can get super crisp lines when painting. I love this, so it is getting its dedicated spot. Now I've experimented a little bit with different ways of holding the tape in place. And I've basically come up with two different solutions. The first way is to cut a slot that perfectly fits a roll of tape. This holds it in place really, really nicely. And I think this is gonna be a great solution for the rolls of tape that will have one specific spot. But for the other rolls, which we'll just have a bunch of different ones of, I think something like this with a V-groove is gonna be perfect because it allows you to lay a bunch of different sizes and thicknesses, and it doesn't really matter how much is left on a roll. And it can really easily hold a bunch of different size tapes and still everything is held in place fairly nicely. So onto the computer. Let's design something that I think is gonna work. Chuck it on the laser cutter, cut everything out in six millimeter poplar, and ta-da! These are all the parts that will hopefully help us organize all these different rolls of tape. You can already see the different ways the tape is gonna be held in place, but let's get everything put together and see if it actually works. And you know what? That was actually the first time I tried to assemble all these pieces. Now that is the benefit of modeling everything in 3D ahead of time. It is much easier to get everything right and make sure that everything fits the first time. All right, so I have two spaces for my favorite tape, one slot each for all the different thicknesses of the regular masking tape. <laughs> oh yeah, nothing is glued together yet. I just wanted to make sure that everything fits first. Right, so here we've got space for all the different larger rolls of tape, the two Big rolls of tape go on here, and the small rolls go on here. Let's glue all this together, get into the drawer, and then start the next one. <laughs> look at this! Doesn't this just look awesome? I got everything glued together. I did at some point glue the whole thing to my work table, but let's not talk too much about that. The whole thing was also a Bit of a tight squeeze, but hey, at least we know it's not gonna move. Everything is loaded up. I did also scrape the inside of all the slots to get some of the burnt edge away, just so it doesn't discolor the side of the masking tape. Next up, let's figure out a way to store these. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Keeps. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. We keep so you can get treatment from home. A licensed doctor will review your information online and then will recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then the hair treatment will get shipped directly to your doorstep every three months. You can message your Keeps doctor 24 seven with any questions or concerns you may have along the way. And you can track your progress with the Keeps progress tracking tool. Prevention is key. And a Keeps treatment can take four to six months or longer before you start seeing results. So it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you can save. So if you're ready to start taking action and prevent hair loss, head to keeps.com slash ALCH or click the link in my description below for 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash A-L-C-H. Right, so spray glue and wood glue. This essentially is the same problem we had with the activator and the CA glue. The spray glue doesn't care which orientation it's stored in, but the wood glue I'd like to keep at a slight angle just so that the tip doesn't get filled up with wood glue. So same process, 3D modeling, export to laser cutter, cut out on the laser cutter, and you're left with a bunch of parts. Since this is pretty similar to the CA glue, let's just assemble this thing and then see how it looks. So I feel like we're starting to get a hang of this. So I've already glued all this stuff in place. Now one of the sides will hold the spray glue and the other side will hold the wood glue at an angle like this. 
And now this thing will fit perfectly right in there. And that is actually all the main bits that were in here already finished and organized. The only thing I've got left in here is some spare glue and these gloves. But I don't really feel like making customized boxes for this stuff. So instead, I made a bunch of just regular square boxes just with laser cut finger joints. Now, I actually designed these myself just like I did with all the other bits. But there is actually a website where you can enter in the different dimensions of the box and the thickness and it will generate one of these just automatically. Also, if you don't like this burnt look, you can also sand them after the fact, giving them a bit of a cleaner look. Just keep in mind that if you sand too much, you'll sand through the layers of the plywood, which doesn't always look that nice. And man, I know I've said it a bunch of times, but I'm really happy with the way this all came out. But now let's try to make an organizer like this, but inside of this box, which except for a flat bottom, has angles in all directions. Now, how do we go about making something that perfectly fits inside a shape like this? There's a couple of ways to go about it, but the way I did it was to start by making a template out of a material that is easy to cut, in this case, some leftover foam core. I started by taking some rough measurements of this box and then cut out this thing to fit inside. Now, obviously, this didn't fit like this the first time, I just cut away small bits at the time until I got something that fit. Now, since the sides here are angled, the smaller this piece gets, the further down into the box it will sit. So I just made it smaller and smaller until it sat at about the right height to support the top of one of these tubes because I want these things to be standing upright like this. I then used one of these angle finders to put against the side of the box to figure out what angles all the sides are. Turns out they're all four degrees. Now I can use those four degrees in my 3D model to sort of make a model of the box. Now with all the parts so far, I've gone straight from modeling to cutting them out into wood and that's worked great. But with this, with all the angles and all the complicated bits, I'm not really that confident that I'm gonna get it right the first time. So I'm actually gonna cut out the first prototype out of this foam core material. So after a bit of laser cutting, putting all the parts together, just hot milk gluing everything in place, Looks very crazy, has a bunch more geometry than the other ones, and hopefully this whole thing fits in here. Now we think this is gonna be really cool at the end, but it's a good thing that I did this prototype because as you can see, the main feature here is these cutouts for these tubes. Only problem is <laughs> the holes are too small. So I can modify that before I cut out the next one. Now, in addition to the obvious way of storing these tubes in the holes in the middle here, I also want to be able to store tubes that have this tip attached because these are too tall to stand upright in the box. So what I've made is this diagonal way of storing these. That way I can have two tubes with the tips attached and still get the lid on. Now, although this seems to work pretty well right now, I did notice that these flaps that hold everything in place in the bottom here are a bit weak. So I wanna make those a bit larger and stronger. All right, next feature is a holder for these solvent bottles that will hold two bottles like this. This is actually also a thing I wanna change in the final version because if I push it too far against one side, the whole thing will fall down. Now the rest of this, I'm actually pretty happy with. So I'm gonna model all the changes I wanna do here. And I think for the next version, I'm just gonna commit to wood, cut everything out, and then we can assemble it and see how everything works put together. <laughs> Are you ready? This is all the parts. This definitely is the biggest thing I'm building. It is three full sheets. And here you can really see the benefit of laser cutting over 3D printing. Doing something this large on a 3D printer would have just taken a ton of filament and a ton of time. I think all of this took about an hour to cut out. All right, so let's start assembling this. <laughs> right, first thing to check. Okay, these fit. That's a good start. And the biggest change I made on this final version over this one is this bottom piece. I noticed that this whole bottom piece was pretty flimsy. It was also made up of three individual parts. So I ended up making this thing out of just one part, which meant that I had to cut down these two pieces. So instead of the side pieces being a hole, they look like this now. All right, so big middle piece into side. And by the way, when it comes to making the right sized hole so that everything will fit together properly, it is worth doing a couple of tests before you start cutting out 
and modeling all of the big parts. What I've noticed is that because this poplar tends to be like a tenth or so bigger than what it's supposed to be, I can just make the holes in the drawings exactly six mil. So when the laser comes and removes a little bit material from each side of that cut, the 6.1 millimeter material would then fit perfectly in the hole the laser leaves. And this whole thing just feels super rigid right away. This is, by the way, the first time I'm assembling these parts. There might very well be some issues that we'll have to redo and cut some new parts. But fingers crossed. Or I'll just mess up the assembly order. <laughs> Literally, like I just did, I put this piece in wrong. Now, like I said, I wanted these to be able to take a little bit more abuse. So I made them considerably larger. So this one will go... I guess this one won't go because I seem to have cut this piece wrong. I'll have to recut that one. The other one will go in here. And you can see compared to this little flimsy bit here, I made this part to go all the way through the side piece. So it now has a ton of support. Time for the top. Don't know how, but that all fits. And then on the back here, instead of just having these two widespread apart, I've added an additional brace that will go right in there. You've got a little back piece, just like with the other one. Can't believe it. Only one mistake in the whole thing. I mean, considering this is the second try, I can live with that. All right, let's recut that one and then we can try everything out. Right. <laughs> Old one, new one. So now hopefully this one should ah, fit like this. And if I've done this right, this whole thing should fit in like this. So that's all of the different unopened tubes, open glue and open acrylic. One and two of those. This wall keeps these from sliding like this. And I've also made cutouts here to easily grab the cans out of there. And on the last side, all of these tips will go on that side. It got some spare room for gloves in the corner. And not to forget this thing. Ha! The lid still fits on. <laughs> Oh, and if you also want to make one of these or any of the organizers I made for my drawers, for the glue or the tape, I'll have all the files able to download from my website, which is alch.shop. Now, this was such a fun build, and I really hope you enjoyed watching. I tried to give you guys a little bit more of the trial and error part of a project than I normally do. So I hope that was interesting. If you thought so, let me know in the comments down below. But you know what? I think that will be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. <sighs> Ow. Which one should I do next?